Hi guys, welcome to video two of my squash doubles vlog series. In today's episode, um, branching out from last week's episode on positioning, we focus on crossing, or in other words, clearing to the side wall. As you can see here, I've pulled up a video from the 2019 SDA Kellner Cup final. In the black shirts, we have John Russell, who's playing the left wall, and his partner, Scott Arnold, who'll be playing the right wall. And in the white, we have Chris Callis, who is about to serve on the right side, and his partner, Robin Clark, who'll be playing on the left wall. So what does crossing mean? Crossing is essentially clearing to your side wall, the side you're playing when your opponent is hitting from the middle of the court, or on the outside of his pivot point. If you go back to the singles court, you would normally get back to the center tee. But since you're responsible for a side of the court, you try to clear towards your wall as much as possible to protect the side of the court you're responsible for. For example, if you're playing the left wall and your opponent is hitting a ball from this area of the court, you want to ensure that you are positioned here, even for the left of the tee position. If you clear to the middle of the court, you leave your opponent with the entire side wall open. Let me move into some examples to explain my point on crossing a little better. The first example is Robin Clark hitting a cross court to Scott Arnold on the inside of his pivot point. This means that Scott will take the ball on his forehand side and Chris will give him the right side wall to play his shot. It's very important to notice how Chris's body weight and feet are much more skewed to the right side of the court, ready to play the ball on his side of the court, which would be his forehand side. Scott's response is an extremely wide cross court, which Robin leaves to go through to Chris to hit. It's important to watch Scott's recovery back to the red line and his tee position. As soon as Chris is about to hit the ball, Scott is on his right wall, on his tee, giving Chris the middle of the court to hit his shot, on the outside of his pivot point and on his backhand. Here's another example of a point where Chris is hitting from outside of his pivot point and everyone clears to their side wall. Pay extra attention to Scott's position as he moves close to the right wall as possible and well in front of the red service line. The further back your opponent is in the court to hit, the more aggressive you want to be with how far you move up in the court. And I mean that by being in front of the service line. Right here you can see Scott well in front of the service line, positioned as close to his right side wall as possible, ready to respond to Chris's shot. Also, while we're on the still, let's look at Chris's recovery from this far back in the court. He decides to take the ball short into JR's front left, and as soon as he hits, he's very quick to move up to the red line and get back into position. When you take the ball in short, you have to follow your ball forwards and get your momentum moving forwards as well. Also, when you're as far back in the court as Chris is, you have to ensure you play your shot and get back to the red line as quickly as possible. Even before John is ready to hit, Chris is back in position, on the red line, recovering from a tough situation, ready to hit the next ball. This example has a couple things going on with it, but what I want you to focus on is how Chris crosses to his side wall. The most efficient way to cross is by mimicking what Chris does with his feet. He lets his left foot go over the right, essentially facing the back wall, keeping his eye on the ball and his opponent, and then opening back out to face the front wall, all while clearing to his side wall and being in the correct position. This is a very effective and efficient way to cross. With just two steps, he's in position on the red line and covering the right side wall, which also allows Scott to hit it outside of his pivot point and through the middle of the court. Scott again hits a great cross court, taking Robin's volley away, forcing him to go back to the back wall and hit outside of his pivot point. Watch how John gives Robin the opportunity to volley, but as soon as Robin goes towards the back to play his forehand, John is facing the back wall and moving to the left side wall and crossing to protect the side of the court he is playing. Notice how he is now right on that tee position for the left wall and given Robin plenty of space to hit through the middle of the court. This last clip, which you don't really see too often, but tactfully is extremely smart, is staying crossed or staying closest to the side wall you're playing and aiming exactly for the pivot point on your side. 
Here we have Robin hitting exactly on that left side wall pivot point and John, even though he chooses to hit on his backhand, Robin stays on the left wall which gives JR plenty space to play but forces his defense to be extremely accurate since both Robin and Chris are well set on their tee positions. This is another great way to move your opponents off their tee position, push them to the back of the court and open up as many options for you and your partner, ensuring you stay crossed like Robin has in this rally. As you see here, both Robin and Chris are well positioned on their tees, putting a good amount of pressure on Team Black. Lastly, here's another example of Chris crossing. Pay attention to his feet, as mentioned above, very efficient way to get in the right position with taking just two steps. As you can see, this match has a lot of good learning markers, so I definitely recommend looking it up on YouTube and watching the match in its entirety. Hopefully these examples give you a little more clarity on positioning and clearing slash crossing. As always, feel free to reach out to me with any questions, concerns, or any topics you'd like me to cover in the next few episodes. See you guys next week. And that wraps up episode number two. Thank you guys so much for watching and hopefully crossing is a little more clear to you as well as positioning. Don't forget to smash that share button, drop me a comment, let me know what you thought of the episode and see you guys um, next week for episode number three. Peace.